Hey everyone, we are um, back and it is Thursday night. We're a couple minutes late, maybe. I don't know, we're pretty close. I'm gonna grab an item that I left out before we start. And that way we can get started. Um, we will uh, give everybody a few moments to jump on with us as um, we are preparing to do some work, some more work onto this chair. So um, hopefully you guys can see. Let me back you up just a tad, just so that we can kind of get a gander, maybe at the full chair. So I might have to bring you back a tad bit more. Trying to reconnect. Uh-oh. Hopefully we're not going to have trouble with our broadcasting tonight. Who knows? One never knows um, when it comes to the broadcasting. So if you are here with us tonight, um, let me know. And I can welcome you. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us tonight. Let me bobble you around just a tad here. Just kind of get you in. So tonight I'm going to do um, a couple of things. Um, I apologize. You're probably hearing... You're gonna hear my fan running in the background. Actually, it's my little heater because it's a little cool um, here in North Carolina. We had a little frost today, so it's a little bit on the chilly side, but um, nothing that's gonna hinder what we're doing, so we can go on with it. So, this is the chair we were working on. I did take all the tape off of it. So, um, we were going in a boho style Texas gypsy style um, design with this chair. If you were on with us on Tuesday evening, you saw that this was all wood and we came in, we cleaned it with white lightning cleaner. We got our peacock color paint on here and it has sat in the workshop since. So it's had plenty of time to cure. And um, tonight what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of zoom you guys in and show you, I'm gonna apply some black wax to this so I'm gonna add some depth to this, not just the color, but we're gonna come in and we're gonna add some depth as well so that um, it'll kind of make our, our, um, our pattern and our fabric sort of pop a little bit more. So obviously you can lean out at you tonight. I don't know why we're kind of bouncing on and off, but um, trying to connect. I don't know why we're doing this. First time I've seen it say something like that. So if you guys I don't know what it is doing. So hopefully we're not gonna have trouble tonight with the broadcast. We're not having any weather issues, so not sure what's going on. But if you are just joining us, you're new to this page and you've not been here before, my name is Kimberly, I am Paint. We are um, located in Kernersville, North Carolina area. We um, obviously work with um, the Prima Design Transfers as well. Guys, I don't know why I'm bumping on. So let me see, I'm having um, network issues, I believe. It keeps trying to bump me on and off and I'm not quite sure why it's doing that. So um, it keeps coming back and forth. So I'm gonna mess with my phone. I don't know if I should mess with my phone. I'll probably mess it up, but um, maybe it'll say, I don't know, it's glitching out. And it could be because there's lots of people probably broadcasting right now. We're all on at the same time. So that could be a possibility. And I apologize if we break up a couple of times. So um, hopefully it'll stay. I'm sorry to mess with it. But what I'm gonna do tonight is um, we are gonna go on and we are adding black wax to this. So we wanna add some depth, make this uh, fat, lovely fabric pop out a little bit more for us. And so I have um, our Dixie Bells uh, Bust Dang Wax. And I've told um, in all of our workshops and everything, I always state that when I use our paste wax, this is what I use it for. I use our paste wax for definition and also for um, what I want to say, for intricate pieces to kind of make um, carvings and things of that nature pop out. This is not my go-to wax when I am using a wax, oh, just wax over my paint. If I'm just waxing over my paint, I just use our Easy Peasy Spray Wax. It's just as it says, it's easy peasy. You spray it on your rag, you apply it to your piece, and voila, you're done. It's not a thick, chalky paste wax that you've got to put on your paint like some paint products out there. That's not the case with um, 
our um, easy peasy spray wax but that's not what I'm doing tonight tonight we are adding depth and we're gonna make this pop out a little bit more and I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing not necessarily see me but I'll be talking through it just to kind of show you how I'm adding this so this is our best dang dang wax in black and I also have brought I'm gonna bring in our hammered copper and um, if you guys know I mentioned a couple last month maybe last yeah it was last month that we were um, we were um, re redefining the formula for our gilding waxes not all of them are coming back in the colors that we have now so if you like those colors let me know so I can snag them for you and um, we uh, are doing that broadcast interruption due to prior wireless Hmm. So if you guys know something I don't know, it says due to prior wireless something or another. I'm not sure what in the world is trying to tell me. So um, anyway, I don't know if it's going to do that all night, but this is the hammered copper. This is what it looks like. And um, I got put a little bit up there on the very top, but I think you're too far away to really see that. So I'm gonna zoom you in. The other thing I have with me is just a little brush. You see it's got the black wax on it and the bristles are a little bit stiff. And that's so that I can get in all these little grooves and I'm gonna pull you up and let you see that. The other item that I have tonight that I'm gonna be using is our is baby wipes. Um, these guys will really help you clean up your wax after you get it on. And I'll show you what I mean by that because you'll see I'll get it in areas that I might not want it to be, and this is how we're gonna get it back off. Um, a lot of times your chalk paint will really grab your wax, and, and it can be a little bit difficult to take back off. There's a couple ways you can stop that from happening. You can, you can clear coat your entire piece prior to waxing, and then you'll be able to pull that wax back off. You can put your clear wax on first, before you put dark wax on to help you pull that back off. Or in my case, I'm gonna use a baby wipe to pull it off. So I'm gonna show you guys all of that technique in that process. And um, I might, I'm gonna spin her around because I think it'll be easier for me to get to it as well as get it up close to you like this so that you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And um, this will give you the best view possible. So what I mean by coming in here, you see I haven't put any black wax on the back of this chair. And let me see, I think I can just kind of maneuver you around a little bit, pull you up just a tad. So all along these edges here is where I, is where I wanna come in and kind of add to this. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. I'm gonna bring it in and you can see here that my black wax is well loved this i've had this can for um so i apologize i have no idea why we're bleeping in and out um so this is our black wax you can see it's pretty dark and i've done nothing other than paint this chair I haven't done anything else to it you see it's a little chalky but that's okay because i can clean that up a little bit too with my and i'm sorry for the up close but i feel like it's best uh, for you guys to be able to see what I'm gonna do. So I'm just kind of pouncing, I, I call it pouncing, I'm not sure that's a proper term, if you will, but I've got me some black wax on here. And so this is what I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna create, yeah, you guys can see that, create some depth along this, uh, along all of the, so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna kind of carve it in. And I don't know, um, I don't know if I should stop my broadcast and start all over again. For the glitch i have no earthly idea why we're glitching see you can see how i'm putting this black wax in and how it's kind of bringing out some depth on this chair so this is how you do it i mean it's a little bit time consuming so i'm just going to kind of bring it in and all along the carving of this chair i think i got the wrong glasses on as well for me to be able to see this but I'm just going to bring this in so you guys can see. So this is some pretty, um, this is our paste wax. And you see I'm putting it on kind of heavy because I know I'm going to pull it back off. So I'm just following the curvature of the chair. And I'm just kind of pushing it into that. Because I don't really want to get it on my lovely fabric. 
As you guys know, I want to save this fabric. It's gorgeous. I'm not doing anything to the fabric. I'm simply painting the wood on this chair. And so this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come in here and add this black wax. And you'll see I'm going to clean it up. I know it looks kind of, kind of dirty. I'm trying to reconnect. I am sorry. I do not know what in the world. I've never seen my phone actually do that. That's a first. So I'm going to come in along here. Hopefully it'll stay with us. I don't know. And um, get some of this detail in. So I'm just going to come in here with. And um, a lot of times when you see these videos, you're wondering um, how, how long can your wax set? It will dry, it ta it'll dry overnight. And sometimes you can even leave it longer. And so I know it kind of looks like, oh, it's a mess, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna clean this up. But right now, I just wanna come in here with my wax and add some depth. Cause that's what we're doing in this video so this is a tedious but do you see how it's just kind of making it pop out a little bit more all that curvature you don't really see just because it's just simply painted so that's why i'm coming along here and creating all along where the natural curves are in this piece so this is definitely in my opinion going to be more of a texas um as i said before kind of a texas boho style i could see it being in a foyer in a nice office like i said with the big longhorns um hanging on the wall in a nice library something like that this is kind of where i envision this piece going and i'm going to clean this up i just want to get a lot of wax up in there because i love the way it makes the rest of the piece sort of pop out and so we're gonna get it up on there good because we're gonna clean it back out okay and we're gonna pull some of it back off but for now we're just gonna outline this along and I think I'll tip her up so you guys can kind of see because I'm gonna come along this bottom edge where you see that I have if you guys have any questions or comments, just shoot them at me. I hope that we're um, live. I'm hard, it's hard to tell. I know a lot of times, a lot of people are on Facebook at one time. Um, this is our normal time. We normally come on at eight o'clock, Tuesday, Thursday evenings. I've about lost track because you know of this, of this stay in place and lockdown. It's kind of hard sometimes you lose track, you know, cabin fever and everything, so. What do you guys, besides teaching um, with your kids, which is exactly what I'm doing, which I've done all along because we homeschool, but I mean, for a lot of people, I know that's kind of a new um, territory to be having to do the brunt of that. So I know that's new transitions, lots of new transitions going on for everybody right now. Um, including us I mean even though the curriculum thing is something we've been doing it is it is um, difficult times everything's just a little bit kind of crazy the youngins are kind of you know they're thrown off you know kids that were supposed to be going to you know seniors graduating and you know all that stuff so everybody's schedules just kind of like up in the air right now um, a lot of stores that are closed, all of my stores that I work out of are currently closed. Um, however, paint is one of our essentials. So, um, honestly, we could have probably stayed open with that. But um, I work out of different, as vendor boothing. So, our workshops and things of that nature just kind of put on hold right now. Although I will do on Saturday, I was planning on um, going ahead and jumping live and doing our, doing our, what was we gonna do this Saturday? We were gonna do a patina class. So don't be surprised if you see me come on the airwaves between, um, I think our classes was supposed to be two to four. So I might jump on at two o'clock on Saturday um, if I don't have anything crazy going on which is kind of hard because I mean we're all kind of stranded 
and um, pull off a patina class and show you guys some stuff with the patina. But um, we'll see as we get a little closer to Saturday. This piece, and now I'm going to show you guys how I clean it up. So you see all the black wax on there. And again, we keep bleeping out. Do not know why we keep bleeping off the airwaves, but I hope it hangs with me. Um, hopefully it will stay. So now you see where I've got it all in here. Now I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna clean it up. This is just a regular baby wipe. It's unscented, um, but it is damp. So that kind of helps. So I'm just gonna come in here and just kind of clean up my lines. I wanna leave my dark in, but I wanna clean up any of my messy lines. So when you're doing that, you kind of gotta keep turning your baby wipe so that it keeps your paint. And at, at this point too, I don't mind if I rub off, if you will, kind of like a distress and a little bit of the wood peek through. That's not gonna harm anything. It's just really gonna add to the effect, to the look of my piece. So you see, I'm just coming in here and I'm backing off that wax a little bit. So I'm just gonna come in here and that's kind of putting the wax right in the curves and right in the crease where I want it and not all over my paint. So um, that's kind of how I kind of make sure that my paint or my paint, my wax is applied to the areas that I want. So you can do heavy or lighter. It's really your preference. And I just keep kind of turning my baby wipe as I'm putting it across my piece. So I'm taking back off what I don't want and leaving of a, a te my technique for cleaning and um, backing off some of this wax getting it out and um, it really may it's really gonna make this fabric really jump out at you and show you guys how lovely this fabric is my phone is bleeping back and forth so you guys can just kind of see how I'm just cleaning that up and making it look um, like it's been like this all along detail to the piece and I shake my head I do not understand why we are um, going back and forth on the airwaves here so here I am just kind of coming in I'm um, keep turning turning my um, baby wipe so that I am cleaning up off my paint and it's also edge and cleaning this edge up nicely so that's the goal is to just come in here and clean up this edge and so this is how you can apply your black wax. This is the paste wax. This is the Dixie Belle Best Dang Wax in black. And we are kind of just cleaning this all up, making sure that wax is in all these nooks and crannies for this piece. I tell you, I don't pop them back and forth onto the airwaves there. I, I'm not sure what in the world is going on. So I don't know if I should stop my video and then come back on and do like a second half or something and see if I can't mess with the setting. Something's going on with it. So um, I might want to do that off the air. So I'm just, I'm just continually turning, just continue, baby wipe. That's giving me the um, ability to clean back up any mess that I have. So if my paint so that my wax is where I want it to be. And if I take off too much, then I just come right back in with my, my brush and add some more back to it. It's just pretty much that simple. So I'm just putting my wax right where I want it. And right in here, I'm gonna add some more back because to me, it looks like it. I like it a little bit heavy. I want it to be dark in these grooves. So just come back in, just come back in with your brush and pop it back in and um, that way you can kind of get your depth that you want. I don't want it on my fabric. I just want a little bit more to see. Of course, we're looking at the back of it here and then I come in with my baby wipe and clean it up. So just kind of play with it, your wax and get what you want. And I'm gonna go along this bottom section here that I have clean that I have and you might need a second baby wipe. Let me grab that real quick. So let's put this down. 
So it's just a, a couple of steps that you take and I'm just using the baby wipe now and I'm bringing it back in here and backing off this black wax, keeping it only where I want it and taking it off where I don't. So I want it down inside all these little curves because it's just gonna give this piece a much better look. And you can see where we painted all along, the fabric meets the wood. It did real well because we taped this all off with the masking tape. Um, that's a little bit big of a job, but um, just be patient with it while you're doing it. Just kind of work with it. Sometimes I've found that if I um, break my pieces, my tape off, it makes it easier for me to get around these curves to get a nice tape job so that when you paint your wood right up against that fabric, you don't get it on your fabric. So that's kind of my little tricks of the trade along the way. So I'm just backing this off, keeping the wax deep inside those curves. So that's how you add your black wax into your piece and then pull it back off. But also, what I wanted to show you guys also was applying some of our gilding wax. So when you think you've got enough of your black wax in there, I may come in and add more because I like that pronounced effect onto this piece because you can see how it's just making this um, fabric sort of just jump out at you now. Um, I'm gonna come in with our copper, let me grab my gilding wax, my hammered copper gilding wax. And I'm going to apply this, close up my thing here, because I'm just gonna keep on a trucking on it. So you can do them all at one time. So now I'm gonna come in, and this is the hammered copper that I'm using. And I'm gonna just use my fingers. I cut all my nails off, so this will be easy for me. And I'm not trying to be where you guys can see me. I want you mostly to see the work so that you guys can, um, while you're at home and you're keeping your fingers busy, and I just kind of come in here and I'm going to come in and see if I can't just add this copper. Now, I was going to add the gold to kind of play off with this, but I started adding the copper on the other side, and I just felt like it just works just as good as my gold, and my copper's fresh, real fresh. So, again, these... Um, these gilding waxes are going to be, I don't know if you guys can kind of see how that's coming in. If I need to pull you in a little bit more, just let me know. If you're with me tonight, say hello. Let me know you're here. So I'm doing more than one thing here. I'm at getting my black wax in there and then I'm coming back in and I'm playing off of my fabric by getting um, some of the color from your fabric in here on on all these curves as well. So I'm adding a lot of character to this um, old wood chair. But the old wood chair had great character in its, heart, in its wood and um, beautiful fabric. So we're playing off the wood and the fabric or the paint and the fabric right now. And that's my goal. So I'm just bumping it up a notch when we are um, working with our products. So you have these products, there's no reason you can't just jump in here and bump them up a bit if you have them on hand. And since I had them on hand, I was just going to just pop you, I'm gonna pop you guys up close. This way you guys can really see how that hammered copper is um, looking on this piece. So you're just kind of bringing it in. You could bring it in along this edge as well and um, just kind of put it in in different areas. I'm wanting not to necessarily be on my fabric. So it's just going to kind of highlight a little bit. You don't have to, but you can. Just kind of come in here and um, give it a little extra umph if you wanted to. So um, I think when you finished with this chair, it's just going to be really that boho feel. Um, gypsy, gypsy style. Gypsy style, gypsy. Texas style, you know, all of that sort of roped into one. And that's kind of where I was going with this piece. Just kind of wanted to just pop it off so that, and you can kind of see how it's changing the whole character of this chair uh, by adding this gilding wax in here. So I'm gonna pull it around. 
So yes, this is kind of tedious and time consuming. It does take time, but you know, what else do we all have right now other than some time on our hands to um, kind of mess with our projects and, you know, bump them up a notch. That's what I'm doing. Just kind of bringing it up a notch and um, giving this chair, uh, which it already had awesome bones and amazing fabric. Now I'm giving it um, a little bit of an upgrade with a paint job and a little gilding wax. So it's amazing what a few extra little project, little pot, what I wanna say, little tips and things that you can do to these to of a, of a refined where we were headed with that you're seeing how we're going along here and um, how that gilding wax is um, playing off of that fabric how the black wax is playing in onto our piece now i'm just going to kind of lift it up a little bit so we can kind of get in here anytime i move my camera it starts bumping around and acting crazy so this is my hammered copper that I'm just kind of coming in here and working into my style onto my piece. So I use my hand, I don't know, not everybody does, but I just kind of come in here and I hope you guys can kind of see that. Sometimes it's difficult when you're seeing, trying to see this with these, with these waxes, these gilding waxes. But I think it'll kind of give you guys the idea of how you can kind of come in and just kind of play off a little bit. I don't want to do too much where my wax is, just on a couple of areas, because I just want to, especially on this inner rail, mostly I'm working, focusing on that outside edge where you guys can probably see a little better. So that's what I'm working on here tonight in my workshop. Um, I'd love to see your, your comments and your questions on to what you guys are working on in your workshops. If you are with me, thank you for joining. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast and joining us on Tuesday, Thursday nights. Um, Eight o'clock is when we are normally here. And I know there are other uh, gals out there that are about to do some different things tonight as well on their broadcast. So um, jump over there, give those gals some love. Clara's going to be on tonight. She's, she's um, whipped up some really awesome home decor items that she's going to be working with as well tonight. So um, hopefully you guys can, um, if you were on here on our last broadcast, she was on live with us. She's out in Texas. Um, share the love. Jump over there. See all her goodies. The different things that she's going to be working on tonight. We're all just kind of staying, um, staying in place and staying busy. So um, that's what we're doing here. And I know everybody else is as well out there in the airwaves. And I think it's making a difference in our area. People um, staying, staying in place, staying in their homes and doing, you know, keeping a, a distance and all that fun stuff. I really think that um, it is helping in our area. So um, let's keep up the good work. Hopefully we'll all be back to our workshops and um, all of our activities that we're used to doing very soon. And praying for those who have not been feeling well, that have been going through um, some issues right now. We pray that the Lord will be by their side and um, give them the strength to get through this particular um, issue that's going on with all of us and all around us here. So, um, so you see that I put that gilding wax on and then now I'm going to cruise around to the other side. I'm sorry if I bobbled you guys. And um, be working on it. Again, I'm grabbing a wet wipe or a baby wipe. And these are unscented. And it pulls, that also pulls the gilding wax off your hands. And I do use my hands because I can feel the edges better if I'm using my hand versus trying to use a brush for that. 
but I do obviously use a brush when I'm applying. Hey guys, um, thanks for jumping in on here. I don't know, I, I don't know if I was on the airways or not. I was blocking in and out, but hey girl, hey Melissa. How are you, hon? So tonight what I'm doing is I'm showing you guys, we've been on here a little while, my phone's been glitching, the, the airways are glitching, I have no idea what's going on, but I'll just kind of recap on some of this. So this is the boho chair we were working on, very Texas gypsy style, so that's what I'm, I'm doing tonight. I'm going to spin you back around, I see some people have jumped on. So this is the lovely fabric we've been working with. And um, this was our peacock color. And tonight what I've done is I've come in here and I've added this depth, this black wax you're seeing, as well as along this edge here. This is our hammered copper. It's a gilding wax. Um, and like I said, Dixie Bell is changing their formula for our gilding waxes. So if you like our gilding waxes the way they are now, grab them while you can, because otherwise they are going to be changing the formula and we're going to be getting some, I'm sure, different colors as well as hopefully keeping some of the ones we've had. And so I'm going to come on the side of this for those of you who are just joining us and show you how I applied this black wax, because I really um, want you guys to be able to see, let me see a side that, I've got wax on that side where um, I'm just going to come in here on this arm and show you guys how I've applied this and uh, try to get you here on top where you can see a little bit better. So Missy, let me know if you can see what I'm doing because the goal is to show you guys what I'm doing. Now I've already put some on here, but I'm going to put it back on and pull it back off and show you the process. That way you guys kind of know. So what I'm using tonight is our um, Best Dang Wax in black. This is a paste wax. These are the waxes that I use when I'm doing depth and stuff of that nature. Um, when I am just sealing my um, paint down, if I'm using a spray wax, it's the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. That's what I use for, for um, just going over my piece. Now I've not sanded this, I've not done anything to this. This is the peacock color that we applied on Tuesday evening that you guys were with us and saw. So I'm gonna take this, I've got a little stiff brush here and I'm not focusing on me, I'm trying to focus on this piece so you guys can see what I'm doing, actually see what I'm doing here. So let me just kind of move this. Every time I move the camera, it kind of messes me up. So does it have, do what now? Does it have a zoom in? No, I don't have a zoom on my camera. It's, it's my cell phone actually, not a camera. So I'm not sure if that's going to mess me up or not. This is the black wax. So you see, I've used a lot of it. Um, I'm, it's got more on one side than the other. Most of the time I'm using a rag to apply this, but tonight I'm using this little brush. So you can kind of see it's got the wax on it and I'm going to apply it along this edge and I'll be able to show you guys. So I'm just gonna come in here and it's just a little narrow brush and I'm just gonna add my wax. And the reason I'm doing this is to just kind of add depth to this piece. Show the character of the curves as well as add some depth to it. Missy, I saw your mom's meal. It looked tasty, Lord. I love baked sweet potato. I don't know, it looked good. She had a post where she was has some yummy. She said she gets a lot of her recipes from you, which is funny. Normally it's the other way around, isn't it? Our youngins get our recipes. So don't worry if you get your black wax all over the place because I'm going to show you how you guys can get it back off. Sorry, girl. I can't get it any closer. I don't have a zoom. You know, I haven't invented all that stuff. So I'm just going to come in here all along these curves and apply my dark wax. This is black, I'm using black. I just felt like black would make this peacock kind of pop a little bit and give this chair some depth. That's my goal here. So I'm coming in and I'm gonna tilt you down. Hopefully I'm not gonna mess up my camera or my phone because it has not liked me tonight. Maybe I can do it like this. Yeah, I think you will see better that way. So I'm just gonna bring my black wax in here you can see I've had it on here a little bit already, but it's, this is for workshop classes. This is how I kind of show what I do to show you guys how you get your look. So you see how it's just kind of making all of that 
um, design in that chair arm just kind of pop out at you and say, hey, look at me. I'm fancy now. So, so this is what I'm doing. I'm just bringing this black wax in and around here. And yes, it's not looking, it's not going to look like this when I get done. This is just the goal to get it on. It's just kind of come in here. Because I'm going to clean it back up. But right now, I'm just going to add some character. Bringing it in. Just follow along the character that's already in place of your on your piece. So down in here, you see. Pop it down in these grooves. So I'm pushing it down in here with this little brush. Getting that wax down in there. Coming up under here. Up under the arm of the chair. And this is where I taped it off. I taped it off and painted right up to the edge of my fabric, you guys. I, obviously, I didn't want to paint my fabric. But I painted right up to it. So I'm coming all along this arm. And I'll show you how I clean it up. And yes, it looks kind of messy. But I'm trying to squish that wax down in there. Because I want that black wax. And my wax is old. I've had it a long time. But this stuff will last you forever. I may have used, what, two or three of these in my time? You know I'm supposed to be. Uh-oh. Let's see, what color are you doing? The cushion. And back next. I'm not painting my cushions, obviously. I love this fabric. So, obviously, I'm going to leave my fabric this way. I did the whole back, yes, before y'all jumped on. Um, are you guys doing okay down there as far as all this, what do I want to say, this virus going around? Lord, freaks me out sometimes worrying about it, but trying to keep my mind and my hands busy. And not my, not my mouth, right? Trying not to eat. I'm trying to not gain weight during this. I'm trying to <laughs> stay busy and stay working and stay focused. If anything, I need to exercise outside of moving all this furniture around. So, yeah, you can see how messy that looks. But, look, I'm going to show you how to clean it up. Missy, this one's for you because surely you still have, you probably still have some baby wipes in your house. You're going to want to grab them. When I get down there, if I can ever get past all this, and I can get down there and do some projects with you. So, you see how messy it is. You see it's on there. And um, now I'm going to come in with my baby wipe. That's why I ask if you have your baby wipe still. So, this is just Nature's Promise. Um, let's see, who did I get these from? This is probably Lowe's Food Store or something. I just grab a bag of these um, baby wipes. They have no scent, all that fun stuff. They're perfect for coming in and cleaning up your wax. So this is what we're going to do right now. We're going to come in. This one's got some gilding wax on it. I might use a new one just because I've got wax on that. But the gilding wax is what we did a while ago. But this is for the black wax. So just get you a baby wipe. And they work perfect because they're the perfect dampness. Because they are damp. This is what helps us pull this black wax back. So we're going to pull this black wax back off. And if you've ever worked with black wax before, you know that when you get it on, it's kind of hard to get back off. Because this is chalk paint. It really grabs. And um, so I'm going to show you guys how to pull it back off and clean up your lines so that you have this really awesome, cool, boho-style gypsy chair. So um, that's kind of my theme here because I love this fabric and I, the goal was to paint this chair to make the fabric pop and not do anything to the fabric because the fabric's in excellent condition. So, hey Brandy, how are you? So, um, you've heard of baby wipes. Let's see what she said. You haven't had any baby wipes. Girl, you need to keep your baby wipes. So here, let me come back in now, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to just clean all this mess up. And you're going to see how I get the wax to just stay where I want it. So I'm going to clean it up and keep my wax only in my space that I want it in. 
So you can pull this back off. You see how it's getting on my wipe? The key is to keep moving your wipes, turning them, you know, and keeping it the clean surface because that keeps your paint clean. Now the paint, you guys, I haven't touched the paint since Tuesday. So it is relatively um, cured. But if when you're using your baby wipe, you may pull back your paint because it's kind of like wet distressing at the same time, which isn't going to hurt my feelings if some of this wood shows because it's just going to give it more character. It's going to make it look older and all of that fun stuff. So um, that's what I'm doing. I'm using the baby wipe. I'm coming in here and just kind of cleaning up my mess, pushing my wax into my curves because I really want it on my curves. I don't necessarily want it all over the arm of my chair. I'm just gonna pull it back and put it where I want it. This is how you get those nice clean lines of getting your wax where you want it. You can see how it's just kind of cleaned it up now. And, um, and so you can add more, say, if you feel like you pulled more off than you wanted to, you can just come back in and reapply. It's just that simple. Same with the paint. If you get done and you've decided that, hey, I think I don't like this color, I might bounce back over to the Bunker Hill Blue. Maybe I think that would look better with my fabric. You know, all it is is a coat of paint away. So it's not that difficult to just kind of wipe it back or come back in. I suggest you leave it overnight. I always say that. Leave it, come back out tomorrow because tomorrow you may feel differently. Now you can kind of see how that's just forcing that black wax right where I want it, right inside, right inside this curve. So it's just really adding some depth and some character to this old chair. So the chair didn't have to look old. Um, it was just a wooden chair with some amazing fabric. And I'm just coming in here now and just giving this old chair a lot more character by adding the wax, pulling the wax back off, in other words, cleaning up my wax, and um, just leaving it in the definition areas that I wanted to keep it in. So that just makes it, you can see right here where it's pulled a little bit of the wood down to the wood, which I'm not, I'm not worried about it because, hey, it's just gonna add character. Um, that's the whole fun of doing these pieces is adding, um, the uniqueness to the piece. So I'm just coming in here, cleaning up all along my leg. People ask me all the time, how do you get your wax so defined into um, your work? This is how it's done. This is how I'm putting it on. This is how I'm getting it the way I want it. So just kind of work with it. It takes a little bit of time, but once you get used to the idea, you will do just fine with it. So this is um, Best Dang Wax by Dixie Bell. And um, I'm gonna turn my piece so that we can get in another area of the chair. And of course, it's, a, it's not really too bad messy. A lot of people will wear their gloves. I'm not too worried about it. So now um, what I did to one side, obviously you come over and you do to the other side. So on this side, you see there's no black wax. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add us some black wax because that's the the whole point of tonight's broadcast is to show you guys how we get in these little curves and get this color in here and also you know before i go on what i'll do is let me just jump back real quick let's go back over here just because now when you're done with this if you wanted to you could come in here and i'll probably we'll just show you because it's a workshop chair, it's not gonna hurt. So I'm gonna put some gilding wax on here. So those of you who weren't watching, didn't see the gilding wax go on, I'm gonna apply it with my finger and I'm gonna come along and just add a little more character to um, this chair. So yes, I've got my gilding wax or my black wax in. Now this is a gilding wax. And so you can just kind of come in here. This is hammered copper. I'll show you guys and so this is going to pull some color from the chair into the outside so you're just kind of pulling everything together so you're going to add a little more character and depth so here now i'm just kind of bringing in 
the hammered copper. So I kind of want this to just look like an old, you know, chair that you'd see out west sitting in a library study. I'm amazed that our chicks are being so quiet. They're listening to me talk, I think. So we had two baby chicks hatch out. Um, and then we have six over, two in the incubator and six um, in the brood box. Or, yeah, if you want to call it that. So here I'm just kind of coming in here and adding a little bit of our gilding wax. So that's what that is. That's how I've applied it. Hopefully you guys can kind of see how it's just kind of shimmering. See how it's giving that little extra shimmer along. It almost gives it that, you know, metal coppery look. So that's just adding us a little bit more of definition. Um, I'll probably add it um, down here lean that over down and along these legs these feet here so I just kind of come in and just kind of give it a little glamour why not you know there's no reason not to just kind of pull in what that's doing is really just kind of pulling the fabric into the whole piece kind of making everything sort of uniform and there's a name on this chair under there Fairfield? Has anybody heard of Fair, Fairfield? That's what this is. Chair is. It's Fairfield. So if you're watching, this is what I'm doing. My name is Kimberly. If you're new here, I am a furniture chalk paint artist for Dixie Bell Chalk Paint here in the Curtisville, North Carolina area. And um, I, my business is Unique Finds and Furniture Designs. And you can find us on the web. Um, we also have, obviously, a Facebook page. We welcome to join our tribe. We have a kind of a chalk paint tribe going on as well. And this is where you'll just find tips and tricks along the way, as well as our YouTube channel. You can see all these broadcast over on our YouTube channel as well. So I try to do start to finish tutorials, give you guys some ideas how to kind of pop your pieces, work with what you got, and um, just kind of bring them up into, um, into uh, today's. So you can kind of see how that's just kind of going over this whole piece and just give it a pop of wow color and then come in, added the black wax, and now I'm adding the gilding wax as well. To just kind of bring all of this, bringing this copper tone, bringing it into our fabric here. So I wanted to kind of run over that quickly in case sometimes people are on the time schedule and they kind of got to run and do other things. But you can kind of see how it's really changing the entire character of this piece. And, um, and now we're going to go continue on with our black wax because I want to put that gilding wax on just to kind of show you guys. In case you're on a schedule and you can't hang with us too long, I understand. Um, obviously, this is a little time consuming when you're coming in and you're adding your waxes and adding a little depth and character. But um, I've got nothing better to do. Um, family's been fed. We're all kind of, you know, what do you call it? Stayed in, staying in place. So we're just kind of hanging in here. So now I'm going to come in and add some character to the inside of this chair arm. So what I do to one side, I do to the other side, whether I'm working on a piece like this behind me or this chair. So um, it doesn't matter. The one thing I love about the products that I use is anything goes. I mean, you can go from country cottage chic, rustic farmhouse vibe, um, you know, French provincial, um, what do I wanna say? Uh, what was I gonna say? The French provincial, any of it, any of the decor design and layouts out there, you can accomplish using this one paint products. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why I got the little heater running. That's what you're hearing in the background. You hear my little birds cheeping in the background. Um, and you hear me uh, coughing because the dry cough is coming from my heater blowing. Because North Carolina decided that it was going to be cold. We actually had frost on the ground. My poor horse, she's shedding, 
And um, and then the next thing you know, it looks like a snow. It snowed, only it just was a heavy frost. So <laughs> we're just bouncing around here, trying to decide what temperature we really want to stay at. But I think we really need the heat because I think that's what was going to help kill off this crazy bug that's going around, and um, or this virus, whatever we want to name you want to put on it. I call it the plague. When I say my prayers at night, I ask for the plague to please leave. Please let this plague be, reside and everybody be able to get back out of this. You know, with North Carolina, we're coming out of winter and we're wanting to see the warm sunshine. I know a lot of kids are wanting to be back in school, which I know it sounds crazy, but a lot of people are wanting to get back to their lives but it is giving us an opportunity um, to just kind of get closer and um, focus on some things that maybe we haven't took the time to focus on and study and fix some issues that are going on you know that we just kind of sweep under the rug and don't address a lot of the times but now that family is close together it gives you a chance to just kind of work on some things <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know. I didn't bring a water bottle out here tonight. So you see, I'm just kind of working. Let me see if I can get you down a little bit. Hey, Angela, how are you? Haven't heard you in a lot. Heard of or saw you guys in a long time. So I hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. <clears throat> Obviously, I'm staying in. Because all of my locations are shut down right now. I have no choice other than to paint. And um, what we are doing, we're able to do is we are able to still paint and work on our pieces. And um, people can still come and pick up pieces. I've been able to still kind of sell um, from my garage. But we're doing like a, what do you want to call that, porch pickup kind of thing. So that we're staying a safe distance. And so thankfully I have had some pieces in my workshop curing because with the the stores and all my facilities shut down I still have a way to sort of make a living you know um, that's kind of the hard thing for all of us right now is being able to continue working so um, thankfully I have had I have a couple of pieces that I'll start next week that are oh, I brought I brought home actually before some of this these store my locations closed so I brought them in so that I would have work here and I'm glad I did because that has been able to sustain us for a little bit here and hopefully um, this will end soon and we can all get back to the way, well maybe not the way we were because maybe we will be better. We will have the opportunity to you know, self reflect and do some different things. So. So this is me putting in the black wax, and now I'm going to come back in. I hope you guys are close enough. Hey, Kayla, how are you? So I am putting in this black wax. As you see, I've got it on the arm here. I put it down here on the bottom. I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to wipe this back here first so you guys can kind of see. You see it's kind of messy along this edge. I have a baby wipe, you guys. This is the way I come in and get all of my wax kind of down in the in the curvature of my piece. And, um, and now I'm just coming back in and wiping it back. And I'll show you how that just adds a lot of character. See how that black wax is, I hope you guys can see that, how that black wax is staying in the grooves. And uh, it also is cleaning it up because I'm using my baby wipe. Be surprised what all baby wipes can be used for. Not just baby bottoms, right? I always have baby wipes um, because this is my go-to way of pulling my black wax back. Or any wax, really. You can pull your gilding wax back this way. So I'm just trying to add some depth and character to this chair that we painted in this peacock color. It's very boho, very Texas gypsy, um, all of those kind of things. So I just added my wax to kind of give this some character. And so now that I've pulled my black wax back, 
And I'm gonna come in with my copper. What did you say? Such a reject. He's such a reject. Oh my, are you talking about your horse? Uh oh. My. Oh, both the, are you, are you at Missy's barn right now? I don't know, I've lost track of time. I'm coming in with the copper, um, this is the copper gilding wax. So I'm gonna come in here, and not only did I put my black wax in, but now I'm coming in here, I'm gonna add my copper. And I'm gonna add, so why am, why am I adding the copper? I'm adding the copper to pull in the fabric to this chair. I wanted the fabric on this chair to say, hello, look at me, I'm gorgeous. It's gorgeous fabric. So this is why I decided to go with this kind of gypsy road style, if that's even a thing. It is now because that's what I'm, that's what I'm kind of, this will be my gypsy road chair, I believe. I believe that's what I'm gonna call it. So, um, so you're at Missy's watching? You all at Missy's? Are y'all laughing at me over there? I hope y'all are staying six feet apart, right? Don't ask me to stay six feet away from the horse. That's not gonna happen, right? I oh, know. I've been out grooming mine. Ooh, she been shedding. Which I'm thankful. I'm thankful to see she's shedding because she stopped shedding and, and not dropping her coat. Then that means that she, well, she's already old. Y'all know that. She's like me. She's as old as the hills. So you see, I'm adding in this copper. I think you can kind of see that. I don't know. Maybe you can. Yeah, we are social distancing. <laughs> Not from the horse, I'm sure. It's, uh, hopefully you guys can see how that um, gilding wax is on the arm of that chair, how it's just kind of pulling in all along that edge. So now what I've got to do is I got to come in here and clean up my black wax. Are y'all partying down there? Oh, I know, right? Her horse doesn't know what social distancing is. No, he loves his mommy. Of course not. I think only mares know what social distancing is. Just ask me. Yeah, I got the mare. I'm the one with a mare. Not y'all. Y'all got boys. Except for, I know, except for your Your Jenny, is that what you call it? A Jenny? Maybe not. So see, I pulled the black wax back on that chair, cleaned it up, and it's just, oh, thank you, Missy. Kind of cleaning it up and making it just, um, just a little bit more. For me, I wanted it a little bit more rustic vibe on this piece, so. Let me pull you back up, because I'm gonna go up to the top. So let me spin her around. Because I know you guys are, ah, and I lost you there for a second. So this is the back of the chair. Look at that gorgeous fabric. I mean, why would you not want this to pop? It's gorgeous fabric. And so that's what I've come in here and done. You see, I've come in, I've added the black wax. I've added our copper. This is the copper on here. Um, I was gonna use gold, but I felt like the copper just kind of really made it stand out. I loved it. So um, yeah, oh, you have a pony mare. <laughs> Yeah, they're fun, right? Yeah, I'm sure she's the worst. Yeah, tell me about it. I got one. Only mine ain't a pony. Mine's a big one. So, um, so this is the black wax, and that is your um, gilding wax on there that's kind of popping off with that. I just really felt like this would be a really fun way to give this chair some pizzazz. And um, so if you guys... Are like me obviously we're all thank you we're um, coming in here now I'm gonna add some um, copper to this on the back side you can always depth add some more depth with your black wax so along this edge you can come in here and pop this in a little bit more um, I just so love this fabric and I just didn't feel like the wood itself you guys was really doing this fabric any good 
by just being wood. I think it was just not highlighting it. It was just kind of hiding it. And um, I really wanted it to make the fabric pop a little bit more. Because like I said, I can just see this out in out west in somebody's library or office, sitting in front of a fireplace, out in Montana somewhere. I mean, could you not see that just sitting somewhere like that in a study somewhere? It would just really, to me, you know, with a, um, what I want to say, with a black and white or, you know, even a cow, like a cowhide rug on the floor, wouldn't that be gorgeous? I mean, this would be gorgeous if this was cowhide too. Um, I don't have cowhide on it. I'm using what's on the piece, but I think that would be gorgeous too. If the chair using this color with against cowhide would be stunning. Definitely, definitely would love that. See how the black, I'm just kind of adding this black in here and how it's just kind of making this kind of jump out making this chair just really kind of say hello. You know, I, I, I can be a statement piece all by myself even though I'm nothing more than a chair. So just so you guys know, if you have a really cool chair and um, it's, it seems like it's missing a little something, that could be what it's missing. I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna clean up some wax, I'm gonna add some more of our copper gilding wax to this piece and continue on, but I'm not gonna keep you guys, you guys get the idea. That is my way of adding some black wax, pulling it back off using your baby wipe. So um, hopefully this was a um, little bit of a lesson that maybe you hadn't seen somebody do and give you some ideas with some pieces around your home. So if you have some little projects and some paint and obviously we have some time on our hands, just a little fun thing to jump in and do if you have a chair in your study, your office, that you've kind of like, hey, how can I make this kind of pop a little bit more? Now, um, hopefully I gave you some ideas to do that with. So I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you all have, you love my virtual, oh, you're so sweet. Thank you, Melissa. So um, I'm going to let you guys go. Hope you all have a blessed evening. I hope everybody stays safe. Um, we hope this virus passes soon and we can all get back to what we enjoy doing. But for now, um, we're just going to stay safe, wash our hands, take care of ourselves, and keep our distance and uh, love from afar. So I thank you guys so much for being here tonight. Hope you all have a blessed evening and a safe weekend. And um, we will see you guys on our next tutorial on Tuesday evening, and we will have um, something new. Don't be surprised though if we don't come out here on Saturday, probably Saturday afternoon because we were supposed to be doing a workshop this weekend. I'm gonna do that patina live and so I'm gonna show you guys how to do a patina. So um, whether you're working with plastic, glass, wood, ceramic, metal, does not matter. We're gonna do some patina and I'm gonna show you guys how fun that can be. And um, so check us out on Saturday afternoon. Until then, you guys stay safe. Have a blessed evening and a wonderful weekend, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for sharing. And um, God bless everybody. Bye-bye.